So this week's topic of Amuna Mondays was the exhaustion around rolling with the punches. And before I begin, the class is dedicated to my younger brother. So, Lule Nishmat for Yosef Ben Devorah. His neshama have the ultimate, ultimate aliyah. So the topic of the exhaustion around rolling with the punches. Um, it's very fueled off of the fact that rolling with the punches is very Amuna based. It's very Amuna and Bitachon driven. But the thing is... It's very easy to say and speak about, like, oh, rolling with the punches. Like, sure, you should obviously do it. Everybody knows it. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. But nobody talks about the exhaustion that comes with it. Like, it's not easy. It's not easy to maintain. It's not easy to, to, to keep doing it. It's extremely tough and and just draining to have to constantly just roll with the punches. It's very exhausting, and nobody talks about the exhaustion that's built around it. Because the truth is, rolling with the punches isn't the actual, like, it doesn't bring negative things. It doesn't. Like, if you actually think about it, it's like, if anything, it's a lot of positives. You can learn the patterns. You build up stamina. You can build, like, a lot of things in life when you're going through something and dealing with stuff constantly. When you're constantly dealing with stuff, you're 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 getting quicker at adapting. And you're adapting far faster than, than the typical person, which means you're handling situations better and efficiently. But at the end of the day, the thing that really grabs people is anticipating the recovery from it. So it's like, it's not getting knocked down. It's not getting punched. It's recovering from the punch. It's getting back up. It's a exhausting thought. So the example I gave was, um, I was, I went and helped a friend fill up a tire in his car. Um, his the tire was flat and I had a pump in my car. I said, sure, no problem. Let me, mm-hmm. let me, um, head to you. And when I got there, I pumped up his tire and we're about to leave he he backs out he's going i back out and all of a sudden i hit uh i didn't even see it there was like a beam right next to my car that i totally did not see and i started backing up and i looked at like i have the rear view camera and i see it's open it's like good so i start turning the wheel it turns out there was a whole beam there it took a whole chunk out of the car and i was just like no like no way like what in the world just happened and I was heading to a birthday, so I literally just got out of the car, locked it, and got into my friend's car and went to the birthday. And immediately after the birthday, it was just flooded with, just drained. I have to handle it. I have to call insurance. I have to call a body shop. I have to do this. I have to do that. I have to find out transportation methods. This is, It was exhausting. And then I'm thinking, okay, finally, you know, it's going to pan out. And then I get to the enterprise place to go and get a rental car which i confirmed three times to pick up for that day and i get a i get dropped off just to be denied service and i was like what what why are you like what why would you deny me like why not and she's like oh it's more expensive oh this is i said you know what it's fine like i'll pay whatever the fee is whatever the fees the rates are whatever it is like i'll pay it. it's fine i need a, i need a vehicle i have work i have a class i give this 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 and she just looks me dead in the eyes and she's like, I refuse to give you, like, I, I refuse to serve you. I refuse to rent you a car. And I'm just so confused. And it was just, it really, like, ate me up inside. Like, why, why, what? And it turns out, I mean, I was wearing an IDF strong shirt. I have no idea if that was the reason. But the truth is, there was no other thing I can think of. I was very polite. It's very nice. I was offering to just pay for whatever, whatever the, the cost is, I'll pay for it. Like, not trying to negotiate down and this like literally what you tell me i'll pay she just refused and i was just drained and i really realized like how much exhaustion comes with just trying and attempting to just roll with the punches but the truth is as soon as i decided you know what this has taken too much mental space in my head it's not worth it and i just stopped and it's not like i stopped caring it's just, I, I realized I can't dictate these things. This has nothing to do with me. I did my part. I called for a reservation. I'm looking for rates. I'm doing this, this, this. Like, what am I supposed to do? It's either 
I can get a car and go, or I, I can't get a car and I can't go. It's very, it's like, it's really black and white. And th- that's really what was what I was dealing with. And through it, I just realized that the actual incident of, okay, the car getting damaged really wasn't the biggest deal. It's like, okay, there's insurance. It's covering it. This, this, this. But it was just the thought of constantly thinking ahead. Okay, like, what's the next step? The rental car. What's the next step? Insurance. The next step. The adjuster. Like, I was just constantly looking at the next step and not just looking at the moment right then and there and being like, okay. Let me handle the moment right now. Right now, I need to get to this place. Right now, I need to get to that place. But I was like anticipating the whole big picture resulting in just being exhausted and resulting in me not doing anything. I ended up having to cancel the class. Ended up not going into work. Like I let the exhaustion get to me because I anticipated the future more than the present. And a lot of the times, that's really where it is. The stress does not come from in the moment. There's nothing stressful about in the moment. It's anticipating the future. That's really where stress comes from. And being exhausted and wear and tear, it's just hindsight. It's either you're looking back and like, wow, that was a long day. Or, oh my gosh, I have so much to do tomorrow. Both are like the source of exhaustion. But if you just be like, okay... This is in front of me right now. I got to do this. There's, you're not really that exhausted. It's not that bad. Why? Because you, people, the, you're wired to just get things done. In the moment, boom, there's a uh, there's an instinct of survival instinct. It's like, okay, this is in front of me right now. I can address it. But if I'm anticipating a week from now, yeah, I'm probably exhausted. I'm probably stressed. I'm probably like all over the place. And that's really where it is. The exhaustion does not come from rolling with the punches. It comes from dealing with it it's not the actual rolling with the punches the action of rolling with the punches and to going through all those things and it's anticipating how i'm how you're going to approach the situation after the fact moving forward how are we going to do this how are we going to do that it's the, that's the where the exhaustion comes from so it's like how do you beat that you just literally live in the moment address it as it comes up when it hits my table i focus on it when it's not on the table yet, it's not on the table yet. If I wanted to attempt to get a head start on it, I can anticipate, you know, and get a little peek ahead of time, but understand that that most likely will cause stress at some point. It's just, at the end of the day, it's really just being honest with yourself. So that's that was pretty much the topic for this week. Um, I want to, again, have in mind, Lule Neshmat for Yosef Ben Devoa. Thank you.